So we're going to talk about sentence completions and we're going to break this down into three separate steps. The first one's right here, which is looking for clues. Now before we get started, we should of course remember what a sentence completion looks like. It's a sentence with a word missing or sometimes more than one word and a bunch of answer choices that could potentially fill in the blank. Now we're not going to solve this one, but I just wanted to refresh your memory. So what we're going to do is not what most people naturally do, which is trying to plug in the answer choices. You don't want to do that. Instead, we're going to look for clues. Let me elaborate on what that means. So it's very important that we look for clues in going about sentence completions. And looking for clues, there are three different ways to do that. We can look for words and phrases that are useful, direction words that are useful, and punctuation that's useful. We're going to go into detail on each one of these, starting with words and phrases. Every word in the sentence can potentially be a clue. And when I say a clue, I mean a hint as to the meaning of what's in the blank. Let's look at some examples here. First off, the banker looked through the woman's records and frowned as he informed her that she was blank. Next, the banker looked through the woman's records and smiled as he informed her that she was blank. And lastly, the doctor looked through the woman's records and frowned as he informed her that she was blank. Now, the sentences are all very similar, but I hope you can tell that the blank should have different words in different cases because of the words in the sentence, not too complicated. Here, the word banker and frowned tell us something about this word, something like, she's not doing well financially, she's broke, something to that effect. Next example, we have banker again as a clue word, but we have smiled. So a word more like successful, something like that, would serve us well. And lastly, we have doctor and frowned as our clue words in the last sentence. And that changes the prediction for the blank dramatically, something like ill. So we want to look at the words in the sentence and see what they tell us about what's going on in the blank. One more example here. The most recent work by Mason, a talented young author, has been heralded as blank. So what words are clue words here? What could give us a hint about what's going on in the blank? Well, the word has to describe the work, so that's useful. He's talented, so that probably also indicates something about the work. And here's a pretty subtle one. Heralded is a word that a lot of people don't know, but it means welcomed or praised, so it's a positive word. And that tells us a lot about what's going on in the blank. And in addition to looking for clues in the form of words and phrases, you want to watch out for direction words. Direction words will tell you whether two ideas in the sentence are related, they're sort of along the same lines, or they do a U-turn and they are contrasting each other. For instance, there are some same direction words here, there are many others, but this is a good start, that tell you that the two parts of the sentence are connected because they're similar. For instance, I would say, I love you and you're great. Those belong together with and, they're same direction words. On the other hand, we have different direction words and they indicate that the two parts of the sentence being connected contrast with each other. I love you although you are a disaster would be an example of how different direction words would come into play. So as you read the sentence, you really want to pay attention to these words, whether they're same direction words or different direction words, because they'll tell you what goes in the blank. It makes a big difference whether I choose and.